mabuju gi ko ke ga ba ne de go isko mo ko mai ga ne go ge ni gi gi ga bo e go ge wa sha shi o do tem a tik ki go ge do tem do to ba ne go o we a tik wa sha shi go de te ba ni gi us me ni ka ni ngan don ji richard morrison he shagana shi mo an i'm called richard morrison in english so. So Richard, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and the work that you do? Well, I work in mental health. I've been I've been there for quite a few quite a few years in mental health and I also work in the corrections for the prisons and jails, Manitoba, Ontario, Minnesota. And I I go elsewhere too. I go, I do a lot of institutions like universities and colleges all over North America so that's just roughly putting it saying it in english <laughs> the translation is often lacking isn't it yes so what are some of the big benefits to to the youth being in a healing lodge that incorporates traditional ways teaching from teachings from elders um, supports mental and physical health supports with respect to addictions what is what is the big benefit that we can see there well it's a long story <laughs> let me say this in in my way that i grew up we called it the midday society back in the early 60s our elders got together and wanted and they said they said what do we want to teach the world how do we want to teach the world and they said learn the english language and when we learn the english language we're going to translate everything to to english so that we can at least make sense of it and for people from all over the world that speak english So that's what that's what we did. Alcohol, drugs is a symptom to the reality of what's going on. It's it's a band-aid that that affects our our people. That's not the problem. The problem is the emotions that we've stored that we've affected ourselves with colonization. Colonization is it outlawed us from being ourselves as a nishinabe as a human being our way of living has been altered cuz when we call kani gi ge in akuna ge chi ge the natural laws of this world were not part of that anymore we're not out in the natural elements of this world that we we grew into we become kagi ge is everything every everything in this world in akki ge in akhani ge means that the natural law chige man is that the spirit rises in this natural element and then when we're we're missing from that natural element element what happens is our feelings get oppressed suppressed our connection to the feel of the land leaves us we don't really fit in anymore cuz a lot of us were all colonized we live in cities towns and houses that that we don't construct anymore we don't make them out of this the natural elements that's around us we forget how to use the tobacco being dako jige our sacred offerings kane bege chige putting that a same on a same on i don't know what tobacco is i know what a same on is a same on is to put my aura into that as a same on and it knows me through the feel of it. it knows my aura and i know the feel of the land and how it is that why i put it out so the colonization has taken us away from our language and really explaining exactly what we're doing So English is so inconclusive it's not concise in 
what we mean, how we mean the idea with the intellect of it is it it only means like a theoretical way of explaining something. So we really don't connect to it, we really don't feel what we're doing, how we do it. In our language, we always feel. The feeling is as greater than the idea, but that way we can achieve a hundred percent of our mentality, stay connected to the all of time, all of the universe and how it is that the language just teaches us to be pure in life. There are no issues, there are no drinking, no alcohol. Before all of that, we need to prevent anything from happening before it happens. The prevention, when we talk about children having all these disconnect, this isolation, these problems that they have, even us as adults that we have, we idealistically, intellectually, have to process them now. As before, when we spoke, when we said buju, buju is the sound, bo is the sound, ju is the feeling of what that sound is. And there's two, two ways to say it is nana buju. Nana buju is life is spoken about very specifically to teach. Wena buju is a question of how we ask questions about what life feels like. So we, we're always talking about the emotions, the, the reality and how it is that we experience, how we feel every experience in this world. So, so from this, mm. it seems to me that when the, or the core of the youth lodge would be the teaching of the language and the teachings of the language. The language are, is the teachings, right? Mm -hmm. Well, the lodge itself, we call it midday. Midday, midday, way, when. Midday, way, when means there's this physical energy. The action of it, it comes from the heart that's connected to the eternal universe. So when we talk about the eternal universe, it's spiritually enlightened. It's just like a sweat lodge we call mito to so when. So when we we re, we say it backwards like so, so when when mm, when is like a physical energy that's that that has a feeling that my mother we call my mother doto without her sustenance of milk providing to us to our physical energy as as a baby that energy mitoto means a, a mother is connected to the universe and nurtures this light's energy that's inside of our heart so in the sweat lodge we're spirits out here out of the sweat lodge we're physical inside the sweat lodge when that door shuts that door shuts, we encompass the darkness, the whole universe comes inside there. We're like sponges, we absorb the universal teachings, the universal eternity inside of us to enlighten, to really inspire us to be spiritually awake, alert, alert aware, because we can feel greater inside the sweat lodge when we come out. We're like a sponge, we absorb all of our teachings that comes from the universe and bring it back out into the physical form and we're able to communicate concisely what that feels like. When it comes to trauma, grief, these are after the facts, after, after a facts that something happened and then we, we live in what they, we call in the academia sense, uh, intervention world. We see the problem, hear the problem, talk about the problem. The problem is the problem. That's that's the way we understand it as Anishinaabe and when we speak our language, we're, we're reacting to the problem. We're not preventing it. We're not working with prevention. Prevention is the language. You 
you have you put so much in <laughs> in these teachings that you're offering today it's just I don't know yes you do it's magnificent when you address youth in particular yeah. what especially youth who are really struggling right now Can you guide their feet to the lodge with your words, with your language, with your teachings? Yes. Beyond all of that, we have items, sacred items that we call Gakinawanji being Gwig, that's our sacred altar. The altar that we, we use, we have a drum, a rattle, feathers, a pipe, smudge in English. To me that doesn't mean anything in English. In our language every one of those words there's teachings in it and how to use it and what to do. So when I say that in Dewey again just the feel of the beat of the drum is like a calling that calls us out when we use tobacco. A seiman. A seiman is we put it out our aura is in there and it's sending out a signal to the to the world and we can feel the essence of it we wake up we can feel this sensation of all of these prayers that are out there being said we wake up one day and start going to ceremonies we we can feel the essence of what sweat lodges are what our tobacco offerings are what our pipes are all about and dohpa means my my pipe, but it doesn't mean anything when I say dop. When I say my pipe, dopogan means my mother's light's energy that I put inside this this object, and this object carries that a same on which somebody's aura is in there. Then we can see, hear, feel the essence of what that life is all about. A rattle we call shishiguan. Shishiguan means that. It's like it's a sparkling, a glimmering light where the sound of it takes away the, our thoughts, concentration. It minimizes it, it calms it down so that stress, trauma, the integrity of, of that sound is very soothing, very calming. Then when we have headaches, it just takes our focus off the headache and calms it down so that our blood starts flowing very calmly, very relaxed, so we're able to heal ourselves very quickly. Just to, I always tell people, go home and grab your baby's rattle and shake it because we're so preoccupied in the mentality and the ideology of everything and how we're learned and what we're taught. So we overcrowd our, our minds. And it's the opposite for us. We free it, we keep it clean, clear. That way we're able to see, hear very clearly what to do, how to do something. Because the feeling is really essential. The integrity of it is impeccable. So teachings, when we lead, guide our children. I worked with so many families over the years that the mothers go home and start using what I call seven grandmother teachings and seven grandfather teachings and those teachings is it's just in english the truth wisdom respect kindness i mean all of these words like we use in english it don't mean nothing to me in my language it's very specific in what it is and how it is it leads us and it guides us to find an inner peace because that inner peace is there. So when we have it, that one mother in one particular, she started hugging her kids, just really nurturing her kids, didn't have to say anything. Her kids didn't whine when she dropped them off at the babysitters. Her kids didn't cry and like be whining, crying and angry and very disruptive and very just running around all over just simple little hugs and touch and paying attention to when they spoke and when we spoke we said in such a way that that we were connected and that's what Buju is all about it's about the feel of life 
we explain it to each other, we explain it very detailed. There are no misunderstandings how, how we say things, what, what we're doing, how we do that. So that leadership is when, when we live in an interventive world, intervention world, because we're focused on the problem. The problem is the problem. We don't really know how to prevent it. We develop rules, laws, regulations, policies, all of these things to govern us to be a, a good person. Yet the opposite to that, our language already takes care of that, shows us how to deal with the angers, the frustrations. There is no such thing as grief, trauma. The idea of it is that's where we get stuck creates a lot of sicknesses within ourselves, personally. Long story short. <laughs> Thought you'd end up with that comment, right? <laughs> um, I don't think there's any more I can ask you today. I mean, you've just covered everything so completely and definitely and um, with such grace. Mm. Uh, just beautiful. Just beautiful. Thank you. Chimikwetch. You're welcome. Like I said, there's lots of teachings. The language is the teachings. When we know the language, then there's lots of speakers out there that speak the language and are educated today. So they don't really teach the teachings in the language. They teach the English. When I say day boy, Everybody will think truth right away. Oh, that means truth. De boy means the heart is oh de. That's that's inside of me. This feeling inside of my heart. And then the other one is n te n te is I I can speak about the energy of a heart. Boy is it breathes. It's going to do do do. We inhale. We exhale the essence of what that feels like we can explain exactly what's what's going on that's just one word that's one of the teachings you are this like kindness peace gentleness you is mixing all the lights energies of experience of physical life experiences we mix them all together so we learn to balance ourselves out we can learn from the good and the bad. Day, night, there's always an opposite to something. We walk in the middle of it all because we're going to learn from both. That way we find a peace in everything that we do. We lead it in such a way. And that's what those grand grandfather, grandmother teachings guides us and leads us to do. We work together in uni, uni, unison, being unified, working together. and so. The children are pure. They don't know the things we know. So we just have to nurture that, really work with it, so that we guide it. Us as the older ones, we, we hang on to a lot of the historical, what they call historical trauma today. And really, it doesn't exist. Only when you think about it, we create it to be a reality. Alcohol, drugs, all of these social issues that we get into in our communities we carry them today we stuff our heart in our language we say oh jibwe the spirit is free to oh jibwe is means the spirit is free to be represented and spoken about in in an open form there is no confidentiality the truth is the truth we can't change it we can learn to express what that is. Ojibwa means we cover, there's a spiritual light energy that we lock our, our feelings internally. So we call it confidentiality. We don't ever speak about it because the, the feeling is locked internal. It's like a big, a big black light that's covering the light, light's energy, that star's energy. We call anang. Anang is means all lights gather together in our body. Every cell has a little fire inside of it, so we represent that light's energy 
and there's billions of cells inside of our body that make us up who we are. So we're able to really use that energy and keep ourselves healthy. When we fast, we say, Bo jige, Bo jige means we take our body and we sit out in nature, learn to feel how we sit in, in comfort with nature. Animals, bugs, anything like that, they don't bother us, they, they, they are with us. The trees, the grass, the air, the rain, the clouds, the water, the rocks, everything. That's what we call kagige and akunige chigeemon. So we learn to speak connected to all the feel of the land. And all of these teachings guides us and leads us to know ourselves 100%. Not just physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally. We know ourselves 100% in all of everything that we experience in this world. Lots of teachings. That's just less than one percent. There was an interview here last night with uh, a woman who had been through residential school. And that's me too. She's at a totally different point than what you're at, though. Mm -hmm. But while she was being interviewed, Sarah was interviewing her, and I was sitting off to the side, and I could feel within her. I can't, I'll try to explain it as best as I can, mm -hmm. because it's one of those things where words don't do it justice. I felt this big ball of trauma sitting in her midriff. And um, Sarah, I think, because Sarah has so much empathy and she doesn't want to do more harm, she would um, lead Sharon, Sharon away from the questions that Sharon really needed her to ask mm. because Sharon was ready as hard as it was to get her story out. She could feel it too and and I just stopped the interview and I, I said to Sharon, I said, I feel that you're ready to unburden today, that you you have this big black ball of trauma that you want to release and to let go so that you can move forward. And she said, yes, that's right. And so I, I, I ended up leaving um, just Sarah and Sharon in the room so that Sharon could feel completely comfortable in saying what it was that she needed to say last night. Mm -hmm. And I said, it doesn't matter if the camera stop. It's not about that. It's about if Sharon can get to the point where she needs to get to today. Um, but it was so tangible for me, seeing that black ball of trauma inside of her that needed to be released. Mm -hmm. Again, it's one of those things where words don't do it any kind of justice. <laughs> um, I'm just thinking it would have been wonderful for her to hear you speak today. Mm -hmm. Yep, I'm a survivor too. Nine years of boarding school. So. Which schools did you go to? Fort Francis. Labrador La Indian Residential School. Was built, was built in the early 1900s. Opened in 1906. Mm. So. Mm. Well, my friend, you've come a long way, but mm. you've gone back where you needed to be, precisely where you needed to be, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the problem is only the problem if you identify it as exactly, a problem, Exactly, right? yep. See, trauma, grief, there, there is no such thing. When it came to funerals, I'm talking like, like the early 60s even, that's when we started traumatizing ourselves, yeah. grieving over funerals, things like that. The thing is, we were taught how to celebrate at a funeral because in the Eastern star we call a woman, we call a wall, but now the woman's energy comes from the East, brings the light's energy from the universe to the physical, so we call the sweat lodge mitoto so when she carries the energy for nine months. And in the West, we walk from East to West, and in the West we call Ningabe Nang, all the man's energy 
is gathers in the West. And we are the ones that work with the woman's energy from the East to bring light's energy here to the physical, physical world. And it takes what we call shagi, shagi amen. Shagi means there's a spark, it just goes takes a man and a woman sparks energy to bring a, a child here to this world, that fifth star. Because each and every one of us, we're, we're a star. We have five fingers for a reason. Our own heart is our thumb. The four directions is, is our four fingers. So it's like an antenna. We point our thumb on our heart and we stay focused, connected to the power, the energy that's there. It's the feeling of that energy. So we have two eyes for a reason, two ears for a reason, to watch, to listen, to how to say things, how to do things, how to lead, how to guide, staying connected to the energy, the feeling of eternal energy, eternal light. We use that in a physical form, the spiritual power that's in all of us. You're welcome. Help me with you.